Jared, in trying to understand the nature of intentionality, agency, the search for agency that we as human beings do, what can we learn, not from an abstract philosophical analysis, what can we learn from study of diverse societies, particularly uh, historically, as we've seen the development of, uh, of our species? From diverse societies, we learn that the concept of agency is often much broader, particularly in traditional societies, than in our modern society. Today, we, you and I, would attribute agency to human beings and to a much lesser extent to animals, to intelligent animals. But in, I would say, all traditional societies, Agency is also attributed to things that you and I would call inanimate. Um, for example, um, among those Kaolong people of New Britain who have the practice of, of widow strangling, um, they'll also attribute um, agency to, say, to sinkholes, that you should not say, sir, this is an area where there are a lot of sinkholes, and that you, you should not do certain things because the sinkhole may collapse under you. Um, you should not walk, a man should not walk over a bridge. If a woman walked over that bridge at a certain stage in her menstrual cycle, because the bridge also will have its own issues. Uh, you should not skip a stone over the water. They get very upset if you skip a stone across the water. Well, yeah, I grew up in, yeah. in the lakes of New Hampshire yeah. where we would skip a stone and try to see yeah. if we could get a skip. Yeah. The cow get very upset if you try to skip a stone at all. And why? why? Oh, because they believe that that will cause bad things to happen. It will, it will Did cause... you trace the genesis of that? No, no. No, the, the genesis is not... It's Nobody not, knows. No, there are these beliefs, and once you acquire the beliefs, uh, once you figure out how to operate in the world, um, the world is a dangerous place. Once you've figured out how to operate safely, you don't tinker with those beliefs, because if you start skipping stones and you, you do 17 other things, one of those 17 things may cause a sinkhole to drop in on you, and so you follow the rules. Well, well we in the United States also follow rules, but some of the... Uh, nonsensical, but we yeah. follow rules because we learn early that to make sense of a complicated world, you follow certain rules and you carry out those rules, even though they may not be. I'll give you a really stupid, simple example. I've learned the rule that when I take a shower and when I'm, when I'm rinsing off, I rinse off as quickly as possible from my head then down to the rest of me. I learned that I overgeneralized one case. When I was renting a house in 1968, my landlord and his wife got into a divorce dispute and they stopped paying the water bills and so I got into the shower and I soaked myself down and the water stopped running so that I couldn't rinse myself off and ever since then, it's now what, 43 years later, whenever I'm in a shower I've overgeneralized and I behave as if the water in the shower might get turned off. It probably will not get turned off but that's one of my rules for operating in life and I'm not going to revisit that rule. <laughs> And so what, what, what happens in that, in that process? We have all of these uh, 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 rules of, of ways to, to, to deal with the world, and it seems like most of them have an origin with some kind of agency, because there has to be some intentionality that we're looking into these things because that, that makes it causation, that makes it having some effect on the world which would have an effect on me. So those, those origins in any society, so there are, there are thousands of rules for how to operate. And some of the rules you can understand the purpose, and some of the rules you don't know the purpose, but the rule is handed down as a traditional rule. You don't, you don't question um, the rules, but they're, they're inherited. Um, a wonderful example, um, the, the, the German statesman Bismarck told the following story to help you understand Tsarist Russia. When Bismarck was ambassador to the Russian court, he noticed that there was, in the big palace grounds, there was a blockhouse with a sentry. And the sentry was there day and night. And he asked, why is the sentry there in this remote part of the palace grounds? And nobody knew the answer. Mm -hmm. And eventually, they found some, some old guard who knew the answer. And the old guard said that two generations ago, a, the first crocus of the year came up there. Mm -hmm. And the sardina put a guard there 
so that that crocus would not be uprooted. And, and the Tsarina died, and the next gods died. And, and 70 years later, nobody remembered why there was that godhouse there. But so one person remembered. That's just an example of a society's rules whose purpose has been forgotten. But to function in a society, we can't constantly question why we just operate. And uh, and how important is the um, attribution of agency, reasons, uh, things that um, that that are uh, causative that relate to uh, I don't know if persons is the right word, but something with a will. We're always looking for something with a will or, or, or to, to justify our reasons for doing things. We're con we're certainly constantly looking for causes. The the. The essence of humanity is the constant search for, for causes. The causes may be causes in the behavior of other people. We learn that if we do a certain thing, someone else may behave in another way. But, so we have an accident. When, when, we have, when I have an accident, I'm asking, what did I do to produce the accident? Uh, did I stand in the shower on one foot? I gotta learn not to stand in the shower on one foot. Uh, uh, about a month ago while driving with my wife, um, at night, I drove my car into a gas station up onto a curb and I didn't notice the curb and I destroyed a tire. Ever since then, I've been asking myself, so what am I gonna do to drive more carefully at night? Now I'm older, I gotta be more careful. I have, must constantly ask myself to look out for curbs and to look out for dark areas and look out for cars. I'm constantly looking for causes, for things that might happen, and that's the essence of being human and coping with the complex. Problem. So would you say that looking for causes is the larger set, and within that set, a, a smaller subset, but still important, is looking for causes that have an agency component? Because some things that are caused are in the inanimate world, and others are caused by some kind of a, a will, some kind of an agency behind it. Either one that's real, like another person doing something, or something that we imagine uh, looking for something supernatural, as it were. Yeah. Nowadays, those of us with a scientific background would search for agency and would, would distinguish between living beings that have agency and inanimate things that don't have agency. But traditional societies um, don't make that distinction between animate agency and inanimate agency. That rock up there, if you do the wrong thing, that rock will fall on you. That tree, um, I would say the tree doesn't have agency, but uh, New Guinean would say if you do such and such a thing, the tree is likely to, to, to fall on you. In effect, though, I behave as if everything has agency in the sense of having causes. It, when I stand on the stepladder, um, I don't believe that the stepladder has agency, but I've learned by reading the newspapers that one of the commonest causes of bad end of life is standing on step ladders, and I treat step ladders as if they have agency. Namely, I have rules for standing, for dealing with them, and I'm not going to question those rules.